I'm Samantha, co-founder and catalyst for Re3D, one of this year's newest startups committed to breaking the barriers to 3D printing. 3D printing is a technology that's been around for a while now, but um, due to cost, um, just recently um, there have been some innovations that have made this technology accessible to anyone. The technology is called additive manufacturing, means that you create an object layer by layer to build your dream and the world around you. How uh, this machine works, the Gigabot, which was just featured on Kickstarter for the last 60 days, is it takes plastic, we call it filament, it's shaped like a thread or in rope, it comes in coils, and we're able to buy that commercially. The plastic is actually fed in here into a hole that um, feeds into an extruder that gets really hot. And when the plastic contacts that hot surface, it melts. Now this machine is actually just a robot that moves on three axes. It can move back and forth, on the y-axis, left and right on the x, and also can move up and down on the z. This platform you see here can actually go down quite a ways. Um, this robot is the largest and most affordable industrial bot right now in the world. It has a two foot by two foot by two foot build space. So at the end of the day, this is just a big robot. And the robot receives some information that tells it whether it should move this in direction, this direction, or in this direction. And right now we're printing a test to demonstrate how precise the um, robot is. It's printing a little square. We can measure it with calipers afterwards to verify that it has the accuracy and tolerance um, that we're claiming. All of the, um, the software that we utilize is open source, por el Mercado Libre, so you're able to go ahead and utilize Google SketchUp or a CAD file if you have it, download a software then that can slice the image into the layers that the robot thinks in which then converts it to a G-code, and that's just a file type that the robot receives down here in a driver that we provide with everyone um, that was also an open source hardware as well, firmware. Absolutely, so this, this commercial filament right now retails for about $30 a kilo. It's polylactic acid, um, which is a biodegradable material made from corn. Um, we also um, a lot of our, our colleagues utilize ABS, which is the same plastic found in Legos, um, as well as nylon. Um, now some of those plastics do require, are, do require um, a little bit more heat um, and a, a stickier surface to adhere to, and so um, we are prototyping right now a heated bed to make it lay down nicely, um, but with polylactic acid it's not necessary. We've thrown some painter's tape down today um, to help it stick to the surface, um, and there's a glass bed underneath it to keep it nice and smooth. So you can, you can, you can save that in... 20 millimeters. It only takes eight minutes. Um, this this uh, edifice here that you see here, the Chrysler building, that took a long, about eight hours. Because um, we wanted to make sure we captured all the detail of it, and we took our time, and it's um, a pretty solid object. If we were to make it hollow, it might go a lot faster. It does require some background in modeling. People that have used a laser cutter or a CNC router before are pretty familiar with this concept. Anyone that can model in CAD would have a pretty easy time. Um, however, there is open source software available such as Google SketchUp, we love that. Um, and there are great tutorials that our people are sharing. Um, we do have a community channel of our own. We're really encouraging the Spanish population to share their video diaries of how they learned how to use it. We're hoping that by building community, it'll make it a little bit easier. Um, we're here today in the Santiago Makerspace, which is a really great collaborative environment where lots of people have modeling experience. I highly recommend if you're interested in becoming a 3D printer and ask someone questions. Um, with a little bit of guidance, it's pretty easy to get up to speed. It does require thinking a little bit differently. Um, case in point, if I were going to make a tree, a big arbol, um, obviously if I were to drop the, the hot plastic down, it would fall to the ground. Um, so it's necessary to build what we call support material to hold, the, say, the branch up that you would break off later. Um, it might make more sense for you to make your tree upside down with the trunk last in the air um, in your model. That way you wouldn't need as much support um, for the structure as you're printing. Sure, so um, as of today we just closed on Kickstarter with a discounted unit. Um, you can get all of the parts in the box for $3,450 um, USD. We also offer a flat pack unit for about $5,000. That's going to retail for a little bit higher on our um, online market pace. We want to reward the people that backed us first um, with the early delivery units. Um, but for about $4,000 you can build your own gigabyte. No, which, with the flat pack unit it will only come um, in a couple of pieces. It'll take you probably two hours to put together and calibrate. 
calibration is the most important part of 3D printing. Um, so it's really important you take your time. We're building lots of instruction manuals and videos to help troubleshoot with that. Um, if you get all the parts in the box, it does require a little bit more um, experience with putting these um, together and it'll probably take you about a day to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's a, just a big box at the end of the day. So um, we just tell people that you can print your world, think about what fits in that box and it's doable. Um, we're hoping by having a big printer like this, um, hobbyists like us and, and small businesses can start to build more functional objects such as a toilet, uh, a chair, or furniture, tools, a shovel. Um, so in the next, in the upcoming weeks, we'll be doing one crazy print a week. We're going to be attempting to um, print the objects we see in the world around us.